Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can make this cool dial animation that follows the location of the mouse. I've made a series on introduction to creative coding and in today's tutorial we're actually going to touch on a bunch of different concepts from nested loop to 2D arrays to object oriented programming. So you can check those videos out if you want to see more of the details of how things work. So first, what we're going to do is that instead of creating a bunch of dials that you just saw, we're just going to create one so that we understand how things work. So we're going to use the function rect and rect is going to help us draw the rectangle. And it takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the X and Y location of the top left corner of the rectangle. And then the third and the fourth are the width and the height. But actually, instead of having it done that way, I want to actually give it the x and y location of the center of the rectangle. And I can do that by changing its mode. And you can just write rect mode and center. And this way, the x and y arguments that we give is going to be the x and y location of the center of the rectangle. And I want it to be at the width divided by 2 and the height divided by 2. So a smack in the middle of the canvas. And then the width and the height will be, let's do 50 by 100. And now, instead of actually giving it width divided by 2 and height divided by 2 here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a function called translate. And basically, the translate function translate the axis. So instead of the origin being at the top left corner here, it's going to be moved to whatever arguments I put here. So I'm going to put width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And then now that the origin is at this location, which is the center of the canvas, I can just draw the rectangle at the origin 0, 0. So if you click play, you get the exact same thing. And the reason I'm doing this is that in order for me to use a function called rotate, which rotates the rectangle, I need to shift the origin point because it rotates around that origin point. So I want it to rotate. And you can give the angle arguments in two modes, radians and degrees. I'm not going to touch on the details of that in this video, but I'm just going to show you, let's say, if I change the angle mode to degrees, and then I put this as, let's say, 90. And click play then you can see that now the rectangle is rotated 90 degrees to the left right so let's do 270 you don't see the difference because now it's flipped 270 degrees from where it originally was so if we do zero which is where it was before but we actually don't want to give a constant angle here as the argument what we want is that we want the angle to change based on the location of the mouse and basically what we need to do is that we need to calculate where the mouse is relative to the origin of the rectangle and you can check out my other video where you can see how you can calculate these angles based on trigonometry. But what we're going to do is that we're going to use a function called inverse tangent to find the angle between two points, the point of the origin here and the point where the mouse is. There are actually two inverse tangent functions. There is a tan and then there is a tan 2. And basically both of them are inverse tangent functions. But the function that we're going to use is going to be the a tan 2 because it makes it easier for us to not have to think about where the x and y point is relative to the four quadrants. Check out the link down below where there is an article that explains the difference between a tan and a tan 2. So what we want to do next is that we want to create a variable called angle. An angle, like I said, we're going to find the angle between the two points using the function a tan 2, right? And the arguments that we need to put is the difference between the two points y coordinate and the two points x coordinate. So we're just going to start with the y, which is mouse y minus the origin but this origin we need to put in width divided it by 2 and then also mouse x minus height oh sorry this one has to be height and then this one has to be width divided by 2 and then we want to rotate by the angle okay, let's click play and now you can see that 
it rotates around where my mouse location is. So now that we have this piece of code where we understand how we can create this one dial, now I'm going to create an object called dial that essentially is going to be using this piece of code. And then after that, we can create a bunch of dials within our grid. So what we need is that we need to create a new file called dial.js, or you can name it whatever you want, at file. What you need to not forget is that you need to go to index.html file. And then underneath here, you're going to copy this code and then change the name to the name of your JavaScript file. And basically what this does is that it connects your new JavaScript file to the program. So when you run the program, the computer knows where to find that file. Let's go back to dial. So we're going to create a class called dial. And so you start by writing the keyword class and then the name of that class dial and then curry bracket. And then you want to start with a constructor function. And the constructor function will have two pieces of information, which is the X and Y location of the center of the dial, right? So I'm going to create dx equals to, and I'm going to give it a parameter x here and y, and then dy here. Only one function that we need, or only one method that we need, and I'm going to call it move dial. And this move dial is basically going to be the code that we just did here to move the dial. So I'm going to go back to the sketch.js file, and I'm going to cut this and put it in here. But we need to tweak it a little bit. We want to translate this not to the middle of the canvas, but we want to translate it to the middle of the dial, right, which is that this location here. And then for the angle for this part, we also need to change to the this dot y and then this has to be this dot x. Okay, and then instead of zero zero here, it will be okay. So let's just see if our class works. And we can see that by first creating an object. So just go back to sketch.js. And we're just going to create this one object. And then let's call it D. D is a new object of the class dial. And we want it to be, let's just do the same exact location here, width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And then now we want to call the function move dial. Let's click run. Oh, you see that? <laughs> Why did it go all the way there? Ah, I made a mistake here because we already translated to the location this.x and this.y, right? So within the rect function here, we basically just need to put 0, comma 0. Okay, so let's play. Okay, so now we have the same exact outcome but now we have this style that is written underneath object-oriented programming. What we want to do next is that we don't want just one dial, right? We want multiple. So first, we're going to create a bunch of dials, right? So we can do that by let me delete this first and then create an array called dials. And how many do we want to create? We want to create a grid. And then we want to create the number of dials based on the number of columns and the number of rows that we have. So let's also create a variable called calls and a variable called rows and a variable called size. And then let's do size to be 100. And then within the setup function, what we want to do is that we want to calculate the number of calls and the number of rows. So calls is going to be width divided by size. So there's going to be four columns. And then same thing for rows, it's going to be height divided by size. So next, we're going to create a 2D array. And this 2D array is how we're going to populate all the dials that we want to create inside this grid. So we need a nested for loop. In the first for loop, we have a counter variable called i, and i is going to be less than calls, right? 
and then we have to create this 2D array first. So dials of i is going to be an empty 1D array. Then now we go to the next for loop, which is going to go from 0 to rows minus 1. And then within this 2D array, what we're going to do is that basically we're just going to copy this line here. And we can delete this out. And this is how we create a new object, right? But new dial, the arguments will not be width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. What is it going to be? It has to be the center of the rectangle within that grid, which is going to be size divided by 2 plus i times size. and size divided by 2 plus j times size. And now, instead of just calling a method for one object, we need a nested for loop to call all the objects within the 2D array. And it's going to be very similar to this, but instead of just d, it has to be what? styles of index i and index j, right? Okay, hopefully this works. Let's click play. Whoa. <laughs> okay, why is this happening here? And the reason this is happening is that we missed one detail thing within our method. So within the move dial method here, because there are a bunch of rectangles here, we need to save the status of each of the translation and the rotation of this rectangle. And we can do that by using the function push here and then pop here. And let's click play. Okay. So now we have the rectangle similar to what we want to do. I'm going to give a new variable cost size. And the reason that I want to do this is because I want the size to be the same as the size here so that all the rectangle fits within the grid. So this is going to be size. So let's try this. Okay, doesn't look a lot different than what we had before. Oh, it doesn't look different at all. It's because I had it at 100 previously too. But let's say if we change the size to, let's do 20. Whoa, isn't this cool? Okay, what if we actually go back to class again and instead of 50 here, we do size, this dot size divided by two. So the width is always half the size of the height. And there you go. You see, now we have a dial, a bunch of dials, objects that follow the location of the mouse. And what you can do is that if you go back to the sketch page, you can change the size here to change the number of the grid, right? And you can also change the size of your dials. You can change the color of the background and the color of the dial itself. And also you can even change the shape. Instead of writing or drawing this rectangle, what if you do like an arrow or something? So there's like a lot of variations that you can try. Give it a try.